Hello, welcome, come on in. We are so excited to have you here for Dream Night. I know it's gonna look a little different this year, but we've got some amazing things lined up and we're so excited to share them with you. Come on in. My name is Jasmine Williams, and I am the Community Partner Program Coordinator and will be your host for this evening. Tonight, we are going to meet some of our animal care specialists and get a behind the scenes look at two of our fan favorites. If you have not grabbed your shark headbands, go ahead and get those because we're gonna work on those together. While I won't be able to answer your questions on camera, I can answer them in the chat. So feel free to drop your questions in there and I look forward to engaging with you. And let's test this out by having you all go to the chat now and tell us where you're tuning in from. First up this evening, we have one of our animal care specialists who takes care of our giant Pacific octopus. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Alceta. I am an aquarist here at the Seattle Aquarium. Welcome to Dream Night. We are happy to share with you one of my favorite animals, licorice, our giant Pacific octopus. Licorice has been with us for about eight months. We think he's about three years old right now and octopus's lifespan is from three to five years old. So he is about to be on his way back to the wild. Licorice is about 40 pounds and 10 feet in arm span. Octopuses have eight arms and no tentacles and about 200 suckers per arm. Licorice is a very lucky octopus today. He has one of his favorite foods, which is Dungeness crab. All right, so you guys can see Licorice did grab the crab. Uh, he can taste it with the taste buds on his suckers. So the crab itself is enrichment, not only because it's part of his diet, but also he has to learn to break open that shell to grab all the meat out of that crab. Also, Licorice is a very messy eater. Um, after he does break open that shell, uh, he is just gonna drop the shells all the way to the bottom of the exhibit so I can clean it up later. Licorice will take about an hour to two hours to eat the whole crab and sometimes he will take all day depending on how hungry he is. Uh, here at the Seattle Aquarium, we do feed him every single day. Uh, we do have different uh, wide variety of diets for him. He does eat squid, Dungeness crab, clams, cockles, crustaceans are one of his favorites and you can tell by the clam shells that's gonna be near his den and the crab shells that are near his den as well. And then sometimes they will eat fish, so such as anchovies and herring, um, anything they can possibly grab that's near them. That was so cool. And that was my first time seeing an octopus eat a crab like that. It's amazing. And now we're gonna go back to Alex, who is gonna show us more about how they get enrichments ready for our octopuses and learn a little bit about what they eat. Hello everyone, welcome to one of our food prep areas. This is the area that I do most of our diets for the exhibits and species that we have, or fish species that we have here. You see this is where our drying racks are, very clean, very organized. Um, if you come this way, we have some great uh, sharp knives and this is a stainless steel sink that I do most of my diets on. It is, uh, has some, a lot of toys here, so we'll go ahead and build some of that later. Um, right here, you'll see some of our menus. Now these menus are, are a tool for us to help us kind of determine which exhibits are gonna get certain food for the day. That there. Um, yeah, so we'll just go right over here and this is our, gonna be our fridge. Now in here, you'll see a wide variety of food. So the octopus likes to eat a little bit of shrimp. 
We have some cockles, some clam that he likes to eat as well. There we go. Down here, we have some anchovies. There we go. And the best part is our Dungeness crab. So this is gonna be one of his favorite foods. Uh, this is more of a high value food we'll use for enrichment. Now this is all frozen, so we're gonna have to pull it out, thaw it in the fridge, and feed it out in the morning. All right, so now we're gonna build some enrichment. Uh, today I have some crab. We're gonna give them uh, into one of these little toys we have here. Uh, so enrichment is just another way for us to uh, stimulate an animal physically or mentally. So that's uh, providing some sort of puzzle feeder or some sort of habitat change. Um, and even uh, the people around us that are gonna be enriching the animal. So today we're gonna start with some toys. Uh, this is gonna be more to stimulate this animal to uh, problem solve, to open up this toy to get the reward out of there. Uh, today I'm gonna pick this big Lego block um, so I already started building it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and build that for you guys. Put that there. This will go there. All right, and then before I put that last piece on, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little crab here. And I'm going to just go ahead and shove them right into the Lego block, just like that. And then we're gonna put the best part on there, which is the small door. So the octopus has to learn to grab that crab and then to pull it out of this small hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. Just like that. And it does float, so he can hang on to it as well as trying to open it up. So octopuses are really intelligent. Um, so when we first hand these enrichments, we try to make it as simple as possible. So that would be placing the crab inside of this tote and handing it to him. Now, the next time I do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab this lid, maybe just put it on halfway. And then whenever he learns it, he's going to go ahead and we're going to put it on all the way and lock it down. Because every time he gets this, he's going to, he's going to know how to open it. So we want to keep making it a little more complex, a little more fun, a little more stimulating when it comes to enrichment. So octopuses are really strong. Now, each arm has about 200 suckers. Now those suckers can hold about 30 pounds. So each of those suckers will grab onto this lid and then they'll go ahead and try to open it up just like that. Now it was a little harder for me, but Licorice will go ahead and open it with ease. Thank you, Alex. Dungeness crab is also my favorite food. And I'm always amazed at how smart our octopuses are and the different ways that they enjoy our enrichments. Speaking of enrichment, we are going to do our shark headbands now. And if you haven't cut it out, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting. And if you don't have the shark headband, that's okay. You can draw any animal that you would like to and we can still make headbands together. And we're gonna color our headband and while we're coloring it, we're gonna go and see another animal care specialist who takes care of our harbor seals. Hello everyone and welcome to Dream Night. My name is Aubrey Tice. I am an animal care specialist here at the Seattle Aquarium with the bird and mammal team. Soon I'm gonna be bringing you in to our harbor seal exhibit to meet Barney and Hogan. Barney is 35 years old and he was born here at the Seattle Aquarium. He is the lighter of the two harbor seals. We also have Hogan who is now eight years old. He came here in 2015, so just six years ago, and he's the darker of the two harbor seals. He weighs about 25 pounds less than Barney, so he is a bit smaller. We train our harbor seals for two main types of behaviors. One are natural behaviors, so that you can see what they would be doing naturally out in the wild. We also train for another behavior called a healthcare behavior. This allows our harbor seals to participate in their own healthcare. Thanks, Aubrey. What a great way to tell the difference between Barney and Hogan. Now, before we see more, I'm a little curious to find out how Aubrey and team prepare food for our harbor seals. Let's go find out. 
Welcome to Food Prep. This is where our Harbor Seals meals are made every single morning. If you come with me, I can show you just exactly what they're getting. Here are our fridges. We have trays of capelin. We have herring. They also receive some squid. And what you don't see in these trays, they actually receive our mackerel as well as anchovy. And when you put it all together, it comes out in a bucket looking like this. Each harbor seal has his own bucket with his name tag. This is Barney's. And over here, this one is for Hogan. We feed our harbor seal several times a day, anywhere between three to five times. They are each receiving several pounds of food, anywhere from about four pounds all the way up to sometimes about 10 pounds. We also put into our harbor seals fish some vitamins. So each day, about twice a day, they'll receive vitamins that are inserted into their fish. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. Luckily for us, some of our vitamins can be very yummy tasty when they come in chewables. Sometimes we just swallow them whole with a little bit of water. However, for harbor seals, we have to hide their vitamins. This is one of the vitamins that we give them. It's just a multivitamin that's meant specifically for our harbor seals. I'm going to take a fish, let's see. I'm gonna take a herring. You take the vitamin and in order to hide it from the harbor seals, you open up the little gill slit and put the vitamin in. Press the little gill slit back down and if you look, one side looks just like the other and they'll never be able to tell that a vitamin was in there because they are grab and gulp feeders. You and I, we both chew our food several times before we swallow it. However, harbor seals don't chew their food at all. So they'll take the herring and it'll go right down their throat, never knowing there was a vitamin, something that's very good for them in there. That was awesome. I love to hear the harbor seals take vitamins just like me. And don't forget, if you have questions, put them in the chat, I'm here to answer them. Now we're gonna go back to Aubrey one more time to learn a little bit more about our harbor seals. Today with Hogan, he'll be showing you some of his natural behaviors. First, we're gonna go into a spin. She's asking Hogan to spin around, and this is how he would check out his surroundings out in the wild. He goes both directions. She tells him, good job, and she gives him, oh, it's a nice big mackerel. If you've ever wondered how a harbor seal escapes a predator such as an orca, you're about to see right now. Hogan jumped high up out of the water, touched the target pole, came right back to Caroline, and she rewards him again with a fish. That's the key to all this training is all the fish. We have capelin, we have herring, we have squid, mackerel, all kinds of yummy fish goodies. Hogan's doing circles in the water. He moves his rear flippers from side to side to help him move, maneuver into the water. He can go into bursts of speed up to about 20 miles per hour. And Caroline's gonna ask him to come up on deck. She's asking him to follow. He moves up for her. And now Hogan's gonna do a circle on land so you can see how he moves on land as well. He's going around Caroline. He undulates his body just like a caterpillar except a really fat one. They aren't as agile on land, on land as they are in the water, but he gets around. Here we are now with Barney and Sarah. 
they're showing us different types of healthcare behaviors where Barney can participate in his own healthcare every day. Sarah is putting in eye drops for Barney. Many of you may not know that harbor seals are prone to eye issues out in the wild and in human care. So Barney receives, receives eye drops daily. Sarah has a target and it's sitting down on the ground right now. And Barney was asked to relax into the target where he just puts his nose on it and literally relaxes. You're about to see a blood draw behavior right now. As we were saying that harbor seal, our harbor seals participate in their own health care. This makes it easy for our trainers and easy for the harbor seal just in case he needs to have a checkup or in this case, if he were to get a blood draw. You can see Sarah is massaging his back flippers and trying to find a good spot to where, maybe where she could find a vein where our vet could do a blood draw. And this is just practice right now and we practice with our harbor seals every day, all types of different behaviors where they're participating in their healthcare. As you can see, Barney did an excellent job he stayed nice and still, was very relaxed. And of course, Sarah's giving him all types of fish because Barney did such a great job. One of the last few things you're gonna see here from Barney, besides getting on the scale, is Barney getting his teeth brushed. And even at 35 years old, almost 36 in September, he's still to this day, getting his teeth brushed with his Sonicare toothbrush, which is why he has excellent teeth at this age. Sarah's brushing his teeth. She, like I said earlier, she's also trying to get the gums to prevent any sort of gingivitis. Harbor seals all also have their own special toothpaste that's on that toothbrush. And now he's holding nice and still. She's gonna bridge him, nice. She told him good job just for holding so still. And she gives him that fish. And I think it's about time for Barney to get weighed. Water. All right, Sarah's now asking Barney to move up on deck. Here he comes. She's targeting him onto the scale. What a good job. She's making sure all of his flippers are on the scale. And we've got him. Barney is weighing right now 213.7 pounds. Thanks, Aubrey. That was great to get up close and personal with Barney and Hogan. Now I finished coloring my shark headband and I made a rainbow and I'm gonna staple mine together so that it'll make a complete headband, but you're welcome to tape or to glue yours. And one of our very favorite talks at Dream Night every year is our divers. So to round out our evening, we're gonna meet our scuba diver in the exhibit right behind me. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Seattle Aquarium and to our virtual Dream Night. We're so excited to share with you the aquarium in one of my favorite places here, the window on Washington waters. My name is Holly, but let's also meet our diver today. Hi, Diver Nicole. Hello, Holly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dream Night. We're so glad you could join us. I am talking to you from underwater. I wear a full face mask. It covers my eyes, nose, and mouth in one piece so that I can breathe and talk to you from underwater at the same time. Well, you're the one underwater, Nicole, so let's go on a little explore together and find out a little bit more about this habitat. Where are we right now? As you peer into this giant window, you are getting a sneak peek at a real place along the coast of Washington state known as Mushroom Rock and this large rocky pinnacle in the center of the habitat is a miniature version of that real place. You're underwater right now and we're curious maybe about if this is supposed to be Washington water. Give us a little underwater weather report. The underwater weather report today 
it looks like my dive computer is telling me that it is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Burn. Well, at 55 degrees, that is pretty cold for a human. How is it you're able to survive underwater? Well, I wear a dry suit. That's this outfit that I get to wear. It covers me from head to toe. It's completely waterproof, so it keeps me insulated in a bubble of air. Underneath my dry suit, I wear two to three layers of fuzzy pajamas. But don't tell anyone my secret. <laughs> Coming to work in your pajamas. Oh, I do. Fun. It's wonderful. Well, with that cold ocean water, Water coming into the aquarium all day long to provide the native habitat for all of our underwater neighbors. Let's start to get to meet some of those animals that are swimming around with you. I happen to see a lot of silverfish all the way up and around you. Let's meet some of those silverfish. Oh, the silvery fish that you see oftentimes swimming or schooling near the surface are mostly coho salmon. That is just one of seven different kinds of salmon that live right here in the Pacific Northwest. Salmon start their lives off in a freshwater stream or river, but they go on an extraordinary journey, leaving freshwater and swimming all the way out to the open ocean. Eventually, they even swim back home. Wow, the quite the marathon swimmers. Well, those salmon we can see are always on the go. But as we look a little deeper in the water, Nicole, we might notice there are some fish that seem to take it easy, especially around the rocks here. Those are different types of rockfish. And rockfish are the home bodies of the Pacific Northwest. Unlike the salmon, the rockfish will spend their entire lives in one area of this rocky reef home. And some rockfish can live well over 100 years. That's a long time. Wow. And in our own backyard of the Salish Sea and along our coast, we have many fish. And what a great example of the diversity of ocean life. Salmon, short-lived, fast swimmers. Rockfish, long-lived, mellow fish. <laughs> Well, those are just a few of our underwater neighbors, and we are happy that you are able to be with us tonight on our virtual dream night, but we sure look forward to seeing you again right here at the aquarium and coming to say hi to Diver Nicole in person. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, Holly and Nicole. This has been so much fun. I hope you all have enjoyed this as much as I have. I've got my shark headband on. I hope you have yours on too. If you'd like to show me yours, feel free to take a photo and tag at Seattle Aquarium on any social media. We've missed having you here in person and can't wait to welcome you back. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. <laughs>